the irony that I've come across this story after I just did one about Sydney Starr, aka the Decepticon, the Decepticon God, as I have now labeled that individual. And this story pops up about this um, Virginia Tech football player by the name of it. And forgive me if I mispronounce his name. It's a mean a toot or a toot day who um, basically got um, tricked by this individual who claimed to be a woman, like a real live crying game situation that left that individual dead because this person, this um, individual that's on your screen, pretty much beat him to death for tricking and lying to him, claiming that they were a woman when they indeed were not. So I'm going to go ahead and get into this article and give my take on it. Prosecutors say suspended Virginia Tech linebacker Isamin E2 beat a man to death after he discovered the victim was not a woman like he had been led to believe online. A toot was charged with second degree murder June 2nd in the death of Blacksburg, Virginia resident Jerry Smith. A toot, a member of Virginia Tech's 2021 recruiting class, was suspended from the team after he was charged. So he just, he practically just got there to VTech. At a bond hearing on Wednesday, attorneys for the state revealed that a toot allegedly told police he punched and stomped Smith, age 40, multiple times after he discovered Smith was a man. A toot had allegedly gone to meet up with someone he thought was a woman for a second sexual encounter at Smith's apartment. Now, it's probably going to mention an article, but I figure I mentioned it here. A lot of people say a second time. Like, how did you not know the first time? Well, let's just say the first time. It didn't get to a certain part in the sexual encounter. It only went so far. In the second encounter is when he, let's just say, he discovered what was below the waist. I'll just leave it at that. According to those police statements, a two visited the victim's apartment on April 10th for oral sex. Well, there you go. After he was matched up with someone named Angie on Tinder. A toot returned to the apartment on May 31st to engage in a sexual activity and discovered the person he was matched up with was a man. A two told the police he punched the victim five times in the face and continued punching them when the person hit the ground and stomped on them. He heard bubbling and gurgling as he left the apartment but didn't call the police. Smith was found dead in his apartment two days later. According to the county medical examiner, Smith died from blunt force trauma to the head. Prosecutors said Wednesday that Smith was missing multiple teeth and had multiple skull fractures and every bone in his face had been broken. Before I go any further, this is exactly why members of Hall T, they are playing with fire when they are doing this. They are playing, but more, most more overly, they're playing with their own life. Like they're literally playing Russian roulette with their lives. That's why when I did that video on Sydney Star, I said, that's why they need to be called out. And when Sydney Star said in that audio, I'm surprised that I'm not dead. Look at this situation right here. And that's why I said when it comes to Hall T in particular, they are known for doing this on more than one occasion. And then when something like this happens to them, then they want to say, oh, that person was being transphobic. No, the person who this happened to took a risk and a gamble with their lives, knowing the consequences, but still did it anyway. And now look at them. They either got badly beaten within an inch of their life or they got beaten so bad that they ended up dead like this person. Um, this Jerry Smith, but they want to play games. They think it's funny. And Jason Black actually had a um a terminology for that. And I wish I would have remembered it for the last video, but I saw that comment on Twitter where I saw this article. They call it stealthing. They call it stealthing, and we all know what the term stealth means. A toot, age 18, was an early enrollee from Virginia Beach and a two-star recruit in the class of 2021. After he was charged with murder, Virginia Tech released a statement that it would continue to assist investigators as much as needed. A toot was granted a $75,000 bond at Wednesday's hearing and is allowed to live with family in Virginia Beach until his trial. Per media accounts from those at the hearing, multiple Virginia Tech players were in attendance. The fact that he had a, rat a relatively low bond and... um. Uh, and he's allowed to live with his family until the trial that 
could possibly mean that he has a pretty strong case on his end, which means I'm not saying he will or if he won't, but it's a good chance that he might actually walk from this. And I said, like I said, I'm not saying that he will or he won't, but if they can prove without the shadow of a doubt that he was indeed tricked by this person and he was within justifiable means to retaliate in which they, which he did, he could either walk from this, serve a little bit of time, pay a fine, or at, um, at the very least be on some kind of long-term probation. But I don't think that he's going to get like a long, like if he does serve any jail time, I don't think that he's going to get a very long, lengthy sentence. That's like 20 years or something like that. I mean, think about it. Like he has a $75,000 bond at 10%. If he's allowed that $7,500 that was paid and he was allowed to live with his family until the trial and there's no trial date yet set that rarely happens especially for a black man especially in in, considering the circumstances of which this occurred and let's just hypothetically say that he was to win his case that's going to put on alert to all members of hall t stop doing this crap because that means this case right here could open up the door for people in the future um, who fall victim, because as far as I'm concerned, this guy's a victim of deceit and trickery at the hands of the person of the deceased. If this case actually goes in his favor, that's going to open the floodgates for many more people who are in his position that could probably have a case work in their favor. I said possibly. I didn't say every last one. Let me go ahead and throw that in there. But let, like I said, Hall T, consider this a warning to you. And the thing is, you've had several, but you keep doing it. How many stories have we heard where members who are part of the trans community end up dead because they keep doing stuff like this? And then they want to come out and quickly say someone's being transphobic and everything like that. Or it's a hate crime against people who are in the trans community when that's not always the case. Because these individuals are not dying because of the lifestyle that they leave. They're dying because they're being deceptive. They're being deceptive. Like I said, go back and look at the video I did on Sydney Star and listen to the audio. They said that they felt like they surprised they lived this long considering what they've done, which means they have a long history. Sydney Star has a long history of pulling this crap. But. They got addicted to doing it and kept doing it anyway because they, I guess they love the rush of potentially getting caught. I don't know. It's very weird. But not everybody's going to have an escape route like Sydney Starr. Some people will end up in positions like the one that he killed or like the other ones that end up in the same position. Six feet under. That's why when they keep saying, oh, you know, people are being this and that phobic towards trans people. I'm like, is it because they really don't like them because of their lifestyle or is it something else? And it's usually the latter rather than the former. And that latter usually lines up with what this story that I'm talking about right now is detailing. But they don't want to talk about that. They don't want to talk about how they go around and trick people into sleeping with them or doing whatever the case may be. And that's a major flaw that they have. Hell, you have some in that community that won't even call that behavior out. They'll just let it slide. And that's them being on code when that happens. Now, I wonder what people in the academy have to say about this story. And I bet you it's some, I bet you it's a lot of phobic through all the comments. If there's anyone talking about this. Because this story, um. It, yeah, it just came. It's recent. It came out Wednesday, June 9th, 2021 for something that happened last for the, happened the previous week. That started a couple months ago. Well, and kind of concluded itself last month. Just giving you a little timeline. But I don't feel anything for the person that this happened to. And I'm talking about the deceased. They knew what they were getting into. They should have they should have spoke up and said who they were and let the person decide. But, oh, no. You let it slide and you went ahead and did it anyway. But 
like they say, you play stupid games with stupid prizes. And the stupid game that this person played was pretending to be a woman knowing damn well they weren't and the prize that they won was death. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this down in the comments and I'll talk to you in the next one.